and welcome back. So even though I've only been on YouTube for a short amount of time, the other day I went back and rewatched the first video that I put on YouTube and I noticed how like stiff and robotic I was. So hopefully I've loosened up a little bit since then. But today I wanted to share with you some information about my go-to designer work bag, the double zip top handle Safiano leather Prada tote. And this video is going to follow the format of the Chloe Mini Drew review. I'm gonna go into what fits into this bag, a deep dive on the materials and the hardware, my experiences with it, and then uh, a couple of work outfit stylings. Nothing too crazy. So I have the annotations all around here. If you want to skip over a certain part, please feel free to do so. But in other words, I'll get right into it. So if you saw my mini Drew review, you know that I like to pare down as much stuff as possible. I do not like to be carrying a big heavy bag around because it hurts in the long run and I have slight scoliosis so I don't want that to suddenly make my back a 90 degree angle. Anyway, with work it's the exact same principle. I don't want to leave anything to chance. I don't want to be unprepared, but I don't want to carry anything extraneous to my well-being. So I like the medium tote because if you open the side snaps up, you can easily fit a full-size notebook in here. This guy is nine and a quarter inches by eleven and a quarter inches, so you can see it's pretty big. I can probably even downsize on the notebook. It fits perfectly in here and so does my MacBook Air. There's still plenty of room in there for the charger. I don't have it in here right now because I was using it but it fits snugly in the bag as well. I also carry around a little pouch that has just some essentials. This is a freebie bag that I got from Sephora one time but inside it I have a little Danboard charger. It has a little face on it. It has two USB ports and it holds more than one full charge for a iPhone. I really like this because it's really small, compact, and powerful. And I like the fact that it has two USB ports because I always end up sharing this with somebody else whose iPhone battery is also running low. I have my own iPhone cord. And then just in case the battery runs out, I also have a generic wall plug to USB charger. After all that electronic stuff has been emptied out, I also have my friction ballpoint pen. I really like this because it's a companion to my notebook. It has three colors, blue, red, and black. And the ink is a little bit special because it's designed to disappear with heat. So there's a little rubber nib at the top. And when you erase the ink with it, it disappears really cleanly, unlike the traditional erasable pens that you find at CVS. So I really like this one. And the final thing in my contents, my life, little pouch is just whatever lipstick I'm wearing. I'm wearing this old Rouge and Love in 340 today and I think it looks really nice. You'll let me know if you think differently, but I just like to keep, you know, minimal cosmetics in the bag. The next thing that I have in my bag is my wallet. And I actually switched wallets recently. My gold one was reaching its last legs and I had it for a really long time, so I decided to switch it up and I got this really cute, really adorable cement pink Miu Miu wallet. And the final item that I have in here should be no surprise to you guys, but it is my iPhone 6 Plus. Everyone needs to carry their cell phone around to communicate with people and I am no different. So all of those things fit comfortably in this Prada medium tote. So let's do a deep dive on the materials that this bag is made of. It is made of a 100% calfskin Safiana leather. The leather detailing goes along the interior of the bag as well. You get a little leather lip here to help keep the shape of the bag and the structure. You also have two leather pockets that are open in the purse that you can slide your cell phone into or other keepsakes. And you have a third pocket on the opposing wall with the Prada logo on it. There's another zippered compartment inside the main cavity so you can also store any extra valuables in there as well. The rest of the interior is actually lined with a jacquard fabric that has the iconic Prada logo on it. The hardware on this purse is simple and utilitarian. The only thing that would be considered extraneous is probably the key ring here but I have seen people actually use it for its intended purpose. I personally don't use it as a key ring because if I attach keys to it I'm afraid that they'll swing freely and it'll scratch my purse but I've seen other people 
people attach charms, Fendi monsters to it, and really customize this bag to make it their own. I personally like the clean classic look, so I just leave this as it is. The zippers, of course, are emblazoned with Prada Milano, and it comes with a detachable shoulder strap with Prada on the hooks that you use to attach the strap to the bag, and the buckle that the strap has as well. In addition to that, you get, of course, the iconic Prada Milano logo on the front of the bag, mixing both the hardware and the Safiano leather. The double top handles that are attached to the bag are also attached via the gold hardware as well. So it really pulls the bag together as a whole as you're carrying it. Not in terms of just, you know, the actual function of the handles, but also in terms of the look. However, my favorite utilitarian detail about this bag that in my opinion makes it one of the most perfect work bags is the protective metal studs at the bottom of the bag. Of course, they're emblazoned with the Prada logo as well, but with a work bag, you never really know where you're gonna put your purse, whether it's gonna be on something nice and clean, or perhaps, you know, God forbid, on the floor of some trade show shoved under a desk. But wherever you put it, you can rest assured that the beautiful leather that is on the bottom of your bag will be a little bit safer with the metal stud holding your bag up. Let's get into my experiences with this bag. I was originally debating between the black and brown, but I thought the brown was a little bit more applicable and forgiving in terms of wearing it and pairing it with work outfits of all seasons. During the spring and summer, I like to wear whites and pastels, and I thought the brown would just be a little bit less harsh than the black. So that's why I went with this color. Of course, they have a bunch of other colors as well that I'll put up on here. And you can obviously feel free to choose whichever one you want. I thought the brown was the most work appropriate and the most utilitarian with all seasons. I specifically picked this bag not to be a handbag. If you see me wearing it, you'll notice that it's slightly too large for my frame. And in the context of work and carrying a bunch of stuff, I really have no problem with that. But on a day-to-day -day basis and just using it, I think it would be really cumbersome. So if you want this bag for a handbag, I would definitely recommend going smaller. But if you want it as a work bag, you could go with the medium or even the large size. When purchasing this bag, I had a deep mistrust of totes because I just get nervous when there's just an open cavity in my bag and there's like no zip. I kind of am reckless with my belongings and I often, you know, forget my sunglasses at a place and have to go run back and get them. Or, you know, I want to make sure my wallet is definitely in a safe place. So that's why I like this bag because it has two zippered compartments that would easily fit my more valuable belongings. And the main compartment can easily fit my laptop, but I could also easily tell if someone's trying to take it out or if I left it somewhere. I can always put my laptop charger in there. I have room for a makeup bag if I need it. I also have room for snacks, which is probably the most important thing that I could pack in there. And I would still have lots of room left over. The downside to that is that the bag is actually pretty heavy by itself. Even without all my work things crowding it, it is kind of weighty. And that's just something to keep in mind if you are, you know, lugging this bag around for the whole day. And that's why I like the detachable shoulder strap because I don't have to carry it like a purse on the crook of my arm. I can always just kind of zip everything up and pop it over my shoulder, which makes it a little bit easier when I have to carry heavy things for a long time. Obviously, switch shoulders occasionally. You don't want your scoliosis getting worse like myself, but I think this bag allows itself to be carried on your body as well as you know by the handle and you still look good both ways that being said the one thing that i have noticed is that the zippers on this purse are a little bit sticky and when i say sticky i mean they just like don't close in a fluid motion and it's not really that big of a deal for the two top zippers but for the interior pocket i feel like it's a real big effort to even open or close it. So definitely check that before you get this purse. And maybe it's because I've only really used the upper zips here that they've like kind of loosened up a little bit, but I don't want to put anything in the interior zip and suddenly not be able to get it open or because I'm trying to open it so hard, I just rip out the jacquard, which is Definitely nightmare scenario, probably not gonna happen, but still something that I worry about. 
I actually do have a single use for the zippered pocket and that is keeping all the official Prada paperwork in there certifying that this is a real bag because like I mentioned a million times before always keep your authenticity card with the purse if you are a klutz like me and you kind of lose things pretty easily. So I purchased this purse basically online. It came delivered to my house in a huge beautiful Prada box that has the same sort of cross hatch patterning that the Safiano leather has. If you do order this purse, definitely beware the box is ginormous, much larger than you would expect for a purse of this size. Um, I actually store all my other purses in that single box right now because it's a good place to store them and it looks nice. It came with a dust bag, all the hardware was wrapped with protective paper or plastic, and I really just had a good, easy time getting this purse, unwrapping it, and using it. Wrapping up the pros and cons of this purse, it is a beautiful purse. It's sturdy, it's durable, it can hold a lot of stuff. It can switch from a top handle purse to a strap purse, which I find very useful while being on the go. It is very streamlined, it's very architectural and looks professional, so you don't have to worry about, you know, looking unprofessional. My cons are that even with the bag totally emptied out, it's still kind of heavy and that the inner zipper is kind of sticky. So just keep that in mind when you're purchasing it. If you go purchase it, maybe you want to visit a store that retails it and try out all the zippers and inspect it yourself. But I personally am very happy with the purse that I purchased offline. So let's get to the outfits. So that was it. I hope that wasn't too horrendous, but I wanted to thank you for watching this video and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. I have a bunch more information about this tote in the description box as well, so please click on that and check it out. And if you like this video, you might like some of the others on my channel. Don't feel obligated to do anything. You can do whatever you'd like. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one and I hope you have a very happy holiday season of December. See ya! I don't know why my nose is so itchy. Uh.